Hello, good day. We are now in domain and range of the circular functions. The objective for this lesson is to illustrate the domain and range of the different circular functions. We start recalling the idea on the unit circle. Here you have an illustration with an arc length S and point one zero. This shows that the circle has a radius of 1. And we also have a central angle theta and terminates at this side here at the second quadrant with general point x, y. Remember that sine s or the, cosine, the sine function of s is equal to y and the cosine function of s is equal to x. By this fact, we can relate this to the Pythagorean theorem that gives us x squared plus y squared equals 1, such that this x can be replaced by cosine s, because cosine s is equal to x, and this y can be replaced also by sine s, because sine s is equal to y. That is, x squared plus y squared equals 1 can now be written as cosine s quantity squared the sine s quantity squared equals 1. Rewriting this, we can have it as cos sine squared s plus sine squared s equals 1. This is now the Pythagorean theorem of a unit circle. We look further to the uh, domain and range of a circular function now. So by this, we look at the ordered pair x, y, okay, here at the second quadrant, generally uh, located in the second quadrant, represents a point still on the unit circle, such that, as we can see in the illustration, your, as your arc will be rotated, your x will always be in the range of negative, from negative 1 to 1. We cannot have a value in x that will be less than negative 1 or that could be greater than 1. That means your x will just be between or from negative 1 to 1. And your y also, the value of y, as your s, arc s will be rotated or the arc will be rotated along this unit circle, your y will always be or, or will always have a value from negative 1 to positive 1. Right? So with this, we defined earlier that uh, y is equal to sine s and x is equal to cosine s. So then with this x and y can be replaced with the functions cosine s and sine s. So that is, instead of writing s, it can be, instead of writing x, we can have negative 1 to 1. And cosine s is from negative 1 to 1. And sine s is from negative 1 to positive 1. It clearly shows that the range of the function sine s and cosine s is from negative 1 to positive 1. Now let's look at the domain of the sine function and cosine function. That is, your central angle theta will be your domain of the function sine and cosine. Remember that your central angle can be rotated more than one complete rotation. That means we can revolve, we can rotate this central angle theta n times. So that means your s sine and I mean your sine function and cosine function exist all throughout your theta as your theta will be rotated n times. That means the domain of this sine function and cosine function will be the set of real numbers. Remember that theta is just the same as your s, meaning as your central angle will be rotated, your s, your arc length also rotates, obviously, right? Because your uh, arc length increases as your uh, rotation increases also. So that means your arc length does not uh, pertains to um, 2 pi only. It could be more than that. It could be greater than 2 pi, obviously. So that means the domain 
for sine function and cosine function will be the set of real numbers. Okay, let's look at the tangent function. For tangent function S, we will look at here the arc S. Remember that it was defined or it is defined that tangent S is equal to y over x. And remember that in a function, I mean in a fraction, your denominator must not be equal to zero to have it as a defined number. So we restrict your tangent s to have a denominator of zero. And when will be that? When will be that? That is the only way x can equal to zero is when the arc length s will terminate at point p zero negative one. That will have an, an arc length of five halves, and when your arc length is rotated clockwise and will terminate at point P0, negative 1. That means your arc length S is negative 5 halves. And then when your arc length, yes, your arc length will be rotated counterclockwise and terminates at P0, negative 1. That means your arc length will be 3 pi over 2. And then when your arc length is rotated clockwise rotation, and then terminates at point B such that it has an ordered pair 0, 1. And that is your arc length will give us a negative 3 pi halves. And this illustrations, your x is equal to 0. That means we restrict our rotation of uh, the angle, central angle, or the, we restrict our s to terminate at this points illustrated okay this clearly shows that to, av to avoid zero as your denominator of the function in tangent we need not to terminate at this specific arc length s so we say that s must not be equal to 2n plus 1 multiplied to pi halves where your n is any integer. That means your s can be uh, rotated counterclockwise or clockwise. Okay? Next, let's look at second function s. Your second function s is defined to be 1 over x or is defined equal as equal to 1 over x. So that means, again, we restrict x not to be equal to 0 so this fraction will be defined okay so the definition of second also has x in the denominator so the domain of this of second is the same as the domain of the tangent because as you can see x is the denominator of the function of the value for second s so then this s must not be equal to then the arc length in second function must not be equal to 2n plus 1 multiplied to pi halves. And let's look at cotangent and cosecant function. Look at these two functions. Both of these functions have denominators of y. So then we restrict our function to rotate sets a way that your y will have equal to 0. And when, when will be that? That could be the your s is equal to n pi. Your y will be equal to 0. Okay? And to guarantee that it will not end at y equal to 0, we need not to have we need to have s not equal to n pi. Okay? So both cotangent and second seconds are defined with the denominator of y as you can see in here so to guarantee that y is not equal to zero the domain of these functions must must be the set of all values of s satisfying this function s not equal to n pi in summary for the domain of the circular functions it gives us an idea that sine and cosine function must be from negative infinity 
to positive infinity. The cosine and sine function is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the tangent and second function will be the set of all s such that s is not equal to 2n plus 1 multiplied to 5 halves. And the domain of cotangent and second function will be the set of all s such that s is not equal to n pi. Now to have the range of the circular functions, we have sine and cosine function is from negative 1 to 1 and the second and cosine second functions its range will be uh, ranging from negative 1 to negative infinity or that will be the set of negative 1 to negative negative infinity to negative 1 or from 1 to positive infinity and the tangent and tangent and cotangent functions, its range will be from negative infinity to positive infinity. That this means that this is the set of all real numbers. Note that the graph of the circular functions, which will be discussed next to this, will or can clearly illustrate the range of the functions. Thank you.